What is the minimum sample size required to conduct statistical analysis? That's become frequently asked question from the researcher who want to conduct statistical analysis. In this video, I will explain to you the most common method to calculate minimum sample size, especially if you use SPSS as the statistical software. If you use Smart PLS, there will be another method that we will not cover in this video, but we will cover in the other video. Before I explain the method, this is one principle that you actually need to know. The bigger your sample is, the better the result will be. One more time, the bigger your sample is, the better the result will be. So we will only calculate the minimum sample size. But if your sample size is higher than the required or the minimum sample size needed, it is okay. There is rule of thumb regarding minimum sample size. The rule of thumb say that the minimum sample size to conduct statistical analysis is 30 samples. The number of 30 is used as the rule of thumb for a minimum sample size in the statistic because it is the point at which central limit theorem begins to apply. The central limit theorem states that the distribution of the sample means will be approximately normal. Therefore, the minimum sample size should be 30. However, even though 30 is a good starting point for the sample size, it is important for you to note that the optimal sample size will vary depending on the statistical test that you will use, the desired level of the confidence, and the amount of variability in the population. Again, the number of 30 is just general rule of thumb. In some cases, a larger sample size may be needed to achieve the desired level of outcome and also power. There is term we call as the saturated sample. Saturated sample means that we use the sample from the all population. One more time, saturated samples mean we use the sample from the entire population. This usually happens because the number of population is relatively small. There is no standard for the population size that we need to use all the data as a sample. Ari Kunto 2012 mentioned that if the number of the population is less than 100, you can use all the population as the sample. However, if the number of the population is large, we can use these two common methods to calculate minimum sample size. The first one is Slovin formula. The second one is Lemesho formula. Slovin formula is used if the population size is known. While for the Lemesho formula, it is used if the population size is unknown. For example, you want to analyze Gen Z in Jakarta. You can find the population size of Gen Z in Jakarta. Therefore, it is better for you to use Slovin formula. But if you could not find the population size data, you can use Lemesho formula. The first one is Slovin formula. Again, Slovin formula is used if you know the population size. The formula will be like this. The minimum sample, this is the small n, equals to the big N, this is the number of the population, divided by 1 plus big N, the number of population, times E square. E here is the significance level or alpha. I have inputted the formula into Microsoft Excel, so we just fill the number of the population and significance level. For example, the number of the population is 100,000. Just input 100,000. And the significance level that is commonly used is 5%. You can use 1% and also 10%. So the minimum sample needed will be 398. For example, again, if the number of the population is only 30,000, the minimum sample needed will be 395. If you change the significance level become 10%, which is higher than the 5%, of course the minimum sample will be lower because the error or the possibility of error is higher. For example, let's change this into 10%. So the minimum sample needed is only 100. So using the Slovin formula, the minimum sample needed will be 
affected by number of population and also the significance level. If you analyze it deeper, this is one important thing that I want to share. Using 5% significance level, as the number of population is higher, the minimum sample needed will be close to 400 and it will never exceed 400 if you use 5% significance level. The next one is Lamashio formula. Lamashio formula is used if the population size is unknown. So the formula will be the n equals to c squared. c is the value of the z in two-tail test. The value of the c will depend on the significance level. I give you a cheat sheet. If the significance level is 1%, the c will be 2.58. If 5%, 1.96. If 10%, the C value will be 1.65. Times P times 1 minus P. So P is the proportion. If you want to get the maximum sample size, put 0.5 in the P. So the P value will be 0.5. Divided by significance level square. I have made the formula in the Microsoft Excel for the Z and also minimum sample needed. So if I change the significance level of 5%, the C will change into 1.96. If it is 10%, the C will change into 1.64. But the C is not limited to 1%, 5%, and 10%. Yeah? If you want to use 2%, it is still possible using the formula. It becomes 2.33 and so on. Okay? Let's assume the significance level is 5%, the most common significance level used. The proportion 0.5, so the C is 1.96, then we can find that the minimum sample needed is 384. So guys, if you see from the result, you seeing 5% significance level, you surely the sample size is around 300 up to 400. It is a bit high if your research time frame is less than a month. However, if you use PLSM using Smart PLS application or software, you can reduce the minimum sample size. Because when you use PLS, there are other minimum sample size method. The most common method is Hair et al., Koch and Hadaya, and using G-Star Power application that we will cover in the other video.